Welcome, and today we're going to be discussing the World's Fair of 1893 in Chicago. Recently, we've been discovering a lot of anomalous things with our history, and I think the real question is, when did this history really begin? When did we begin? what uh, might be called the reset. When did the reset occur? You know, when we look at photos like this one, what we see is these world's fairs that occurred in the early 1900s. And these world's fairs appear to have technologies and seem to be boasting machinery and buildings that we would never again see after the World's Fair. And the historical narrative is that these buildings were built for the World's Fair and torn down after the World's Fair. But when we look at a lot of these technologies and, you know, artifacts on display here, what we see is things that have been inherited by the new people and everything is on display for one last time and we would see this great expo of all these buildings and technologies and then everything would disappear so again you know where did all of this come from if these earliest photographs come from 1850, early 1900s, then we have to ask, is that when things began? Now we can see signs of many resets and many different timelines, but it's almost useless going any further back than our most recent reset period. What happened here? You know, we arrive on the scene to all of this and never again do we replicate these technologies. And why do we tear these buildings down? I mean, look at this. Are we really to believe that this building was created only for the world's fair? I mean, did we really have that much money to throw around to build glory in this fashion only to tear it down after a World's Fair? Unbelievable. And now we're going to research the Chicago World's Fair here a bit. And it was held in 1893 to celebrate the 400th anniversary of Christopher Columbus's arrival to the New World. The layout of the Chicago Columbia Exposition was in large part designed by John Wellborn Root and a few other guys. It was the prototype of what he and his colleagues thought a city should be. The color of the material generally used to cover the building's facades gave the fairgrounds its nickname, the White City. Many prominent architects designed its 14 great buildings. The exposition covered over 690 acres. The great exposition became a symbol of the Victorian era. It also included the first moving sidewalk, a travelator. In 1892, working under extremely tight deadlines to complete construction, almost all of the fair structures were designed to be temporary. Of the more than 200 buildings erected for the fair, the only two which still stand in place are the Palace of Fine Arts and the World's Congress Auxiliary Building. From the time the fair closed until 1920, the Palace of Fine Arts housed the Field Columbian Museum. Three other significant buildings survived the fair. The first is the Norway Building, a recreation of a traditional wooden stave church. The effort to power the fair with electricity, which became a demonstration piece for Westinghouse, had been developing for many years. 
It was called the War of the Currents between DC and AC. This was also the first time that power would be displayed for mankind. And this was a fight between Edison and Tesla, and Tesla would eventually win this contract. Now here is a look at what they called the White City. Now apparently this was constructed, once again, in a few years for the World's Fair. Now if this isn't the hokiest story I think I've ever heard in my life, then I don't know what is. If this looks like this was something that was built within a few years for the World's Fair in Chicago and then torn down, then there's no limit to what we could be force-fed. Once again, we really, really have to be logical here. Now, if we didn't know that this was in Chicago, we certainly might think this was in Europe. And to imagine that something like this would be built for a fair, for a fair, when in present times this would probably take years to construct. Years. And again, we're to believe that they had the resources to build something like this, only to level it. And this is one of many hundreds of buildings that were apparently built for this World's Fair, only to be torn down. And they call this the Agricultural Building. Now, does this seem like the Agricultural Building? Or some kind of Greek-Roman building in any part of the world but America? But no, this was apparently just thrown up, only to be destroyed, just for an event. We now use tents and uh, portable such things for events. Now, back then, white marble stone was just fine for temporary usage. Now again, the great Ferris wheel that they boasted. And again, the beginning of electricity. I mean, look at this. These electric things they're displaying. You know, some kind of uh, energy conducting mechanism. We don't even know. But apparently that was something that you could display in the late 1800s at the World's Fair. These may have been Tesla's displays. It was the first time he would introduce his motors to the world. And again, fully lit up. Late 1800s. But again, you know, was this infrastructure already here? Or was this really built for a single event? A temporary event. And the Ferris wheel, pretty interesting Ferris wheel, pretty amazing actually. A true monster. Just like everything back then was glorious. Well, so is this Ferris wheel. Look at this. A little apartment. Each, uh, each cabin is the size of a studio apartment. Amazing. And again, you know, ask yourself, could this have been built for one short little event? This kind of detail and how identical it looks to what we find all over the world. Notice how there's no ships. And here again is a view of the 600 acres of buildings that they supposedly built only to tear down. No. The plan is to tear this down and to have one last little hoorah and take credit for all of this glory. Now look at the crowd here. I mean, this looks like Disneyland. Now I'll be honest, I don't know if this one is made of stone. This may be a cheap replica, I'm not sure. But the one in the back certainly isn't. No. This was not built for the World's Fair back here. And again, 
Looking north between mines and electricity buildings. So that's really interesting. Who is this source? Friedman Fine Arts. So very interesting, actually. That Friedman Fine Arts should call these electricity buildings. And that's exactly what we're coming to realize that they are now. And again, look at this. I mean, if this was not the most glorious city, and again, I want you to recall the story that I told just moments ago about these designers of the World's Fair and how they were imagining the perfect city. And this is, you know, what they designed. I don't think so. This was a perfect city. And we waltz in here, have a World's Fair, have a big party, and we destroy it. And leave only a few buildings. And many buildings have been preserved in Chicago, very fortunately. But out of these 200, very few remain. The mining building, again, you know, the mining building, the agricultural building. Are you kidding me? The manufacturing building from the casino, again, you know, was this not a grand, grand building from an older time? I mean, we're not just talking about laying out buildings here. We're talking about laying out these waterfronts with, you know, these glorious statues in the middle of them. I mean, this is not, you know, something that you do in a year. This is building a city. We're not talking about building a few buildings here. Absolutely amazing. Again, between the manufacturers and the electricity buildings. Look at this. The Golden Door of Transportation Building. I mean, now it's just starting to turn into a, a slap in the face. I mean, you're going to tell me this is the Transportation Building. I mean, just, you know, every day I think I've seen the most ridiculous thing only to have it replaced by the next most ridiculous thing I've ever experienced, the transportation building. And again, to think that this is a crime against humanity to tear a building like this down. I don't care what the story is behind it. And this certainly wasn't built for the World's Fair. This is absolutely amazing and torn down to hide our past. The Machinery Hall from the Colonnade. Machinery Hall is uh, absolutely glorious. I can't even believe it. I really can't. We've gone backwards. Again, the Agricultural Building. How could you even conceive of calling this an agricultural building when this is like the Grand Palace? You know, this is just mind-blowing, and I'm pretty much speechless. I really am. Now, you can tell that Antiquitech has been removed from here. You really can, knowing nothing about this. The woman's building. This is just something else. This is just the most amazing thing that could have been in America. But some has survived. Absolutely amazing. To think that they had the nerve to tell us that this was built for the World's Fair as they wiped out our history in front of our very eyes. Well, not in front of ours, in front of the people in the late 1800s and early 1900s, and would continue to do so until, you know, the 1950s or whenever the historical preservation societies would step in. And I've seen a lot of buildings in Salt Lake City be preserved due to the historical society. The World's Fair. 1893, maybe one of the last great years, at least to witness such things. Yeah, this would have changed everything. If we would have grown up with these preserved 
buildings around us, we would have viewed the entire world differently. And we would have not thought about Greece and Rome and Turkey as these separate places from us here in North America. No, the whole world would have a unified feel once people realized that there was a one world people building the same style everywhere. So that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a blessed day. And please like, comment, and subscribe.